<laughs> You're ridiculous. I'm putting my nails on. Always setting me up for fa I'm doing my nails too. Always setting me up for failure, and I knew you were that kind of girl on season eight when you snuck the win. You you booted me out of the season basically, single-handedly, and I never forgave you for that. Listen, well, here we are, just six years after we. Go, we filmed Drag Race six years ago. No. Yeah. Yes, that makes bitch. Sense. That is it, so crazy. Yeah. No, it feels like six years. I feel it feels like six years. We call each other every once in a while, but you called me the other day and it meant a lot to me. You said, you know, where was I? I was like eating lobster in Maine. <laughs> oh yeah. And you said, you know, it just occurred to me that you're my oldest drag friend. Yeah, I've known you. you you're my dra you're my longest like drag sister. I've I've been friends with you, but you're the you're the one that keeps on keeps on Thorgy and on. Yeah. I'm gonna we stick around for the abuse. I stick around for the abuse, and I am here for it. We sound like two old ladies. Yep, just old friends. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> Back when I lived in New York City, that Starbucks used to be a nightclub. You'd go to Splash Bar and do a bump of cocaine off the Go Go Boy's dick. Penis. On the dance, <laughs> on the dance floor, we were all doing Black Beauties and Quaaludes. <laughs> What's a Black Beauty? I think it's like a drug, I think. No, you just wanted to say that term because you're that kind of girl and I knew you were. Cause I'm, Cause I'm the black beauty. Cause you're the black beauty, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I am loving this this Phil Spector moment. <laughs> you, <have. laughs> uh, you know, I got this stupid wig. I bought it in like every color. And I, I, I keep going, what the f do I look like? Phil Spector. It's Phil Spector. <laughs> right, you're a little blurry to me right now, but I, you're wearing like a little headscarf moment. Well, you're drunk. <laughs> no, there are a lot of things that have changed in the last six years since we've been on the show, and you were shady, and I just want to say, I am drinking tonight. <laughs> and I just want to say that I am not drunk. But there are a lot of, there are just a lot of things that have changed, and I want to cheers to that. Cheers! <laughs> You're so silly. All right, you got your nails done, girl. Hello, my little bobbleheads. Welcome back to Purse First and Impressions. We are living on the internet these days. And I have with me my oldest drag friend. And I haven't known her that long. Um, please welcome to Purse First Impressions of Thorgy Thor. <laughs> so are you living for Drag Race UK? Are you, is yes. this your life? Like for me, honestly right now, Drag Race UK for me is more entertaining than Drag Race America. You gave me a call and said, listen, let's review this. And I actually re-watched all of season one. And then I've caught up on Work. season two. This is drama Work. and the best drama I've ever seen. I, I'm here for all of it. And listen, I love to hear y'all's opinions. So please, please, please make sure you go on Twitter and use the hashtag first first impressions. Because as y'all know, I be up in the up in the hashtag, up in the mentions having a little chat with y'all. So the queens are walking back into the workroom after the elimination. And the girls are all like chatting and doing their thing back and forth. And then RuPaul comes on and tells everyone because of coronavirus, they all have to sashay away. And they're all, just like everyone in the world, we were expecting three weeks, a month, seven months later. What did they do with these girls for seven months? Did they all talk to each other? Did they have opportunities to but like work on new looks? Did they get an opportunity to bring their suitcases back filled with new couture? That's the key key. So we find out later in the episode that apparently girls can take their suitcases home. Some girls did bring back new looks, which may or may not have been inspired by looks other girls had in the workroom at uh, the same yeah. time. And also, yeah. imagine fitting into your outfits after a quarantine. Like, fitting into the same girl. Well, okay. When all the girls walked back into the runway walk, uh, thing, I was like, oops. And I had to pause it every single time when I had that shot of the mm -hmm. girl's face. And I'm like, let's clock the work that this girl had done. <laughs> and then it was the next girl. I'm girl. like, her cheeks are filled. 
Sister Sister came back like she was on All Star. She got the works. She went in and she and honestly, by the way, go off, live. But I was like, you better. She yeah. had the most. She got her teeth Damn. done. Flip. She had a she flipper. Had, she had, she the had teeth. and even even her attitude. She came back and like Sister Sister had been quiet the whole thing. But this episode, she's like, all right, live. I'm back and I'm spunky and I'm making jokes <laughs> and I'm skipping around. My, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so also shook. Veronica is out of the competition. Like, bitch tested positive. And may I say, uh, Veronica was my favorite contestant in mm -hmm. the show. She was my number one. And does she not look exactly like Jane Sibbett, the actress? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. I want you to pull a side by side with Jane Sibbett, pull up Jane Sibbett and Sibbett. Veronica. Pull her up. They look identical. Yeah, she looked exactly like Jane Sibbett. And I was like, I am so here for this. It was also weird to have uh, RuPaul's Drag Race disclose Veronica Green's COVID status. <laughs> in front of I thought that too. I was like, oh, I did one of those. Ooh. I would have been like, y'all could have just positive. said, y'all could have just said Miss Thing couldn't make it. Y'all didn't have to tell everyone you know. Miss Thing walking around with uh, antibodies. We got to keep moving. Right. So they bring the girls back. They bring back. the three girls back. Okay. Hey, hey, have, hey, who do we I'm have? hosting here, Mr. <laughs> oh, because oh, I know we, we could go on no. until midnight. So, so like, we right. bring the three okay. girls back. Like, everyone except Jenny Lemon. And RuPaul makes it very clear that Jim, Jenny Lemon is not invited back. And the yeah. girls vote yeah. pretty heavily for Joe Black. No one votes for Cherry Valentine. Yeah. Like, Steve Dale and Cherry Valentine leave. And then Joe Black and Lawrence Chaney are the two group captains. So we never, you and I never had a um, a challenge where we had to like, no, that's not true. We, we did live singing. We like saying street meets live, but we never did a recording session. No, but you did talk to Lucian pretty fiercely and <laughs> I loved it every second of it. And Betty was not loving it. <laughs> Betty was so well, annoyed. Also, I think I got it. I got everything you were saying because I've known you forever and I'm like, yes, you're right. However, right now, I'd rather utilize this time by placating this crazy man. Oh, you're so right. And then going back to work. The thing too is me and you, Thorgy, are always, we love to call people out. I don't know if any of you remember this, but me and Thorgy used to work at a restaurant called Ooh. Lucky Chains. And when we were at Lucky Chains, there was Ooh. a new manager. The new manager came in and he said, because me and, there, there were girls who would like join within the last year and girls have been there for like 20 years. So me and Thorgy were like the girls who were in the, technically the new group, but it was his manager's first day. And he was evaluating all of us to see if we'd be able to keep our jobs. So he said to us, he <laughs> called us in his office I remember one that. One, and he looked at Thorgy and he said, I'm just um, checking out the new girls. And Thorgy goes, I'm not new. You're new. <laughs> this is your first day. Yes. <laughs> And I waited. What do you got for me? Nothing? Anyway, I have to go take this noodle order, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but this is your first day. Clearly, the United King dolls were hands and shoulders above the other banana drama. Who were the standouts for you in United King dolls? For me, I thought that Lawrence Cheney really came through. Yes, Lawrence Cheney. And I, I kind of, there's something about me that like doesn't want to like always love her. I don't know what it is. I like want her to do better. It's because once. she's the front runner. It's because she's the front runner. Yeah. And you, when a front, when a front runner is doing when great, somebody's you just get really shady. good and doing well. I'm like, ugh, can you like stop? Bob, can you shut up? We stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> You said this in something and you go, you know, Thorgy, she doesn't want to win. She just wants you to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I just think there should be no winners. We should all just be lovely. <laughs> Thorgy, what in the monastery school is going on with the no grades? No one gets grades. We all just eat vegan apples. Everyone should just like hang out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, first of all, RuPaul's look. RuPaul looks insane. This is so gorgeous. Everything is right. Let's go down the line and talk about their looks and their verses. So, Lawrence Chaney work, oh. dancing to a Highland jig. Lawrence Chaney's up in this gig. What do you think of this look? What do you think of this verse? The, the blatant symbols a little bit on her boobs bother me. It's like somebody wearing a billboard. I'd always rather just not look yeah, at a I mean, symbol. 
and just look at a design. That's just me. Um, the boots, I just like, yeah. I really like a heel, so I'm like, a chunky boot for me is like, ah, it drives me boot. crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Trixie Mattel. What about the verse? It's just, I watch it and I just go, oh God, every time somebody's like, RuPaul picked me and here I am and I'm snatching wigs and I'm snatching crowns and I'm so incredible. I'm on the stage, RuPaul's looking at me and you can't come for this. And I'm like, well, I do. Okay. I do agree that the verse isn't iconic, but I think that she did a good job performing, and I'll give her that. Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right, let's, I'm not going to read all the verses, because these verses aren't, they're not groundbreaking. Let's talk about Joe Black. Joe Black's look is one of the most, um, it was, I will say, when Joe Black came out, I remember thinking, what the fuck is she wearing? Oh, girl, 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 girl. Also, you, uh, let me say this. You are a master, master at writing lyrics. It just comes out of you. That is like, of all the things you're really oh, talented at, you. in my this eye, is that is your best. You just open your mouth and you really could be like, here it is, everyone shut up. And it's one take. You One take and you just say it and you go, did somebody record it? What about my makeup it? skills though? Because it's always brilliant. You're so you're so good at writing lyrics and you could just say it in one take <laughs> and it's so good. <laughs> but really, so I, I'm interested to see your opinion because I'm, I'm not a great writer. I'm not obsessed with any of these lyrics. I want to talk about these looks right now. Joe oh, Black's okay. look, one of the most controversial things of the episode. What did you think of this look? Okay, so I literally stood up paused it and had to take a break when RuPaul literally looked at this girl and was like, I don't want no motherfucking H&M on the runway. And it was like, da, 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 da. they changed the lighting for her. I was like, ah! I had to walk away. Also, she was making fun of it, not knowing. She goes, this looks like it came from Primark. And then Joe decides to lean forward and go, actually, H&M. <laughs> As if it's something H clever. H&M. And, and RuPaul goes like this, ooh. And I was like, ooh, here it comes. And she goes, you better throw some motherfucking glitter on that motherfucking H&M dress. And I was like, ah! <laughs> yeah, it was like she said, she goes, ask H&M. And the oh. RuPaul just go, what the fuck did you just say? What the fuck did you? What the Excuse me, Like bitch? literally, Ru, at the, like the one point in the season, she was looking down to do one thing. You know, whatever. And then they caught her one, RuPaul's <laughs> one moment where she goes, actually, it's H&M. You know, she <laughs> caught it. What did you fucking say? <laughs> I don't want no motherfucking H&M. On this motherfucker. <laughs> Lights. It was so good. I want to rewatch it right now. Anyway, everyone was terrified. I loved every second of it. It was probably the best moment of all of RuPaul's Drag Race history for me, hands down, of any season. Except for when I got eliminated. That was a great moment for me. All right, um, so let's go over. Now let's talk about these runways. See, Bimini Bunbulash in her parasol, the category is like a day at the beach. Oh, no, no, no. It's a day at the seaside, which I had to look up afterwards. And a oh. sea the seaside is something in like, <laughs> everyone gets like food and it's cold, but like it, everyone like hangs out. Yeah. So I thought day at the seaside as a New Yorker, I'm like, oh, like a day at the beach. So that's why when people walked out with French fry outfits, got I was like, it, I it. was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what this is French fry outfits, you know? But okay. Got it. But that's kind of cute. I kind of like it. Yeah, I think it looks pretty nice. Especially with their new fillers. <laughs> oh my God. Let's talk about taste. I, d I like the cat suit, but like, I think the shells are kind of placed in like a, I don't like the way the shells are placed. They don't look, the shells don't look great to me. It's a little too heavy in the crotch. So, okay, so right. now it's the Battle of the Chips. Girl. So, a right, comes out, she's wearing a chip look. Oh. But, I mean, this looks good. This I looks know. Great. Now that I'm looking at it again, I'm like, oh, this looks so good. And she made it. She made this. That's what's so cool to me. She, like, sat there and went, I'm going to make this. And it's a completely different silhouette, different fabric, and different concept yeah. than everything else. This girl is a designer. Now, let's talk about the winner of Drag Race UK Season 2. Lawrence Cheney is dressed... Like a um, like a life, like a like she got floaties and a life, uh, a lifesaver. How do you feel about this look? Did you say let's talk about the winner of season two? <laughs> 
love it, love it. When she walked out, I said, Mimi, I'm first. Right away, something Mimi would wear. I mean, wear. she's fat and white, but besides the fat and white thing, do you really think so? Immediately. In the face, it's in the coloring, yeah. it's in the concept, like wearing that shit on her head. Mimi always has a good shape. I don't know. I just screamed Mimi and I was like, Mimi. It's pretty clever. I couldn't, it's clever and she's clever. She's Mimi's clever. clever. Now this next look reminded me of you, and it is the best look of the <laughs> fucking night. Ellie By Diamond. the way, do you remember I, when I showed up to my birthday at a- uh, As a penguin? As a penguin, do you remember this? <laughs> yes, I do. You and, painted an orange beak and a million face. Oh my god! You had a penguin costume. Well, I, remember. I did not even remember that until you just said that. Honestly, for me, this is the best look of the evening. This is the yeah. best look of the evening, hands yeah. down. Yeah, and, and you know what I love is that that this girl came out there dressed like a motherfucking bird, and they loved it. And they're like, "This is what drag is," and I'm like. Yeah, well, it was always most that. of them. It at, was at one point, Graham Norton. Graham Norton was like, "Is this drag?" And I was like, "Graham, it's drag. Don't yeah. it's drag, Graham. Trust me." But but it's okay to question it. What is it? And the conversation needs to yeah. keep going. <laughs> Let's talk about your favorite queen, Miss Tia Coffee. Oh my God! Stop! No! Oh God! <laughs> here we go! I'm almost. It, I can't. I this, this is upsetting. When this she is walked bad, out, bad. This is my bad, face, bad. when she walked out, I was like this. Oh, God. <laughs> like, I don't even care what it is. And then they were like, oh, your ice cream cone. And I went, really? First of all, <laughs> this is not an ice cream cone. Second of all, what is flattering about this? Third of all, this literally looks like something. You can go to amazon.com and type in ice cream cone costume. Yeah. And this is what comes to your house. And then they're gonna call Joe Black out for wearing an H&M look, not on the runway, but during a challenge. But for her final runway look, she's gonna wear this. This is from party.com. And this is what I'm saying. Tia, if you're listening, I might like you if we hang out but what your taste is not there and i love you girl but you got to get it together sweetie bob is your biggest fan Here's i the guess thing. i actually don't think uh, listen i don't think that this was store bought i which is which makes it even worse i think someone made this for her but just didn't do a good job i actually think which the makes same it thing. even worse i think the same thing it's just funnier what i said <laughs> Yeah. So let's go on to the to the, to the little bag of chips, which is um, sister sister, who's also a a a a, a bag of, a bag of chips, a, a bag of French fries. Now we learned later that it's, apparently Ahura accused her for having seven months off and all this time to create new looks, which she says yes, but then denies copying her idea. What do you think? Well, it is interesting. I will say this: if everyone in the room, if everyone from seven months ago can remember that you had a Pamela Anderson outfit fit in the corner yeah. that I think is safe to say you remember seeing a massive bag of fucking french fries in the corner. If they saw your titty plate in a tiny, tiny little swimsuit, they did call then her chances out. are you saw said, no, no, this no, 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 no. massive We looked through your closet and we knew that you had a bathing suit with a Pamela wig. We saw it. I'm like, you remember that? <laughs> okay, do you all think that Sister Sister stole this look from Ahura, please comment below. So Joe Black has this like wind blown look, which I think is really And great. you know what, seeing it as a still image in front of me, it's even better. Oh, it's okay. amazing, she looks amazing. This is a, this is, this is a great, great look. Okay, so which one is your favorite look? I'm gonna, because I'm, because I'm theatrics, I'm gonna pick Joe Black as my favorite look. Work. I'm gonna say my favorite look is uh, Ellie Diamond. This look is so. Wow! I'm just like look, look at this face. Like I don't even know where the feathers stop I know. and where the makeup begins, uh, the leggings, the everything. This is just such a good fucking look. Um, who's the worst look? The worst look for me this week. I mean, do I what? say it or do we just know? It is the ice cream cone from Party City on Tia Coffee's body. I mean, it's, 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 it's Tia Coffee. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's bad. It's, it's bad. Pretty. It's bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And I love yep. her, but that is just, quite frankly, un it's bad, bad. It's like, girl, 
Mm. And it doesn't even look like, like an yikes. ice cream cone. <laughs> you know? I mean, once you know it's an ice cream cone, it kind of looks like an ice cream cone, but it just looks like an ugly ice cream cone. Like, it, it's a, it is a bad... It's bad. There is nothing... I don't have any nice things to say no. about this outfit because it's bad. Do you think that Tia Coffee's look looked like an ice cream cone? Comment below. Please tell me what you think. I want to know if she comes from like a rich family that paid, like Jeez. if they own the BBC. And they said, listen, if you allow our niece or our nephew to come in and last long enough, we will give you funding. And I think that really happened. I think she is just strung along because somebody in her family knows someone. Either that or after Graham Norton, yeah. after Graham Norton oh, broke up with what? Tina Burner, after Graham Norton broke up with Tina Burner, started dating Tia Coffee. I think that's what happened. And he's one of the judges and that is what is happening. Well, oh, I, have a, I have a question about this uh, this stolen chip idea. Have, have you ever had anyone steal an idea from you and then act like they didn't? Oh, constantly. I, my whole body just went, yes. But it's that whole thing. I heard somebody, I, it happened to me all the time. And it, it probably happens a lot with you because we're similar minded as New Yorkers for a while. Your brain just gets going and you have these mm -hmm. great ideas. What you don't realize and what I've realized over time as being a creative person Somebody else has the same idea. If you don't act on it, somebody else will do it. And then you think they stole your idea. But really, they're just pretty clever too. I, am I wrong? I mean, sometimes. I, I had an instance where this one queen kept taking all of my ideas. Every time I would do something, she would do something very, very similar. So what I did was I just parted up with her and we started doing sibling rivalry together. <laughs> Let's team up. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that to be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, I needed that. I needed that. Thank you. Thank you. Mitch, can you put. I'm going to bow. Insert like applause here. I would like applause to happen at this point in the show. Very and good. That was a lot very of applause. good. Applause. Standing up, maybe shoot, cut to an audience, cut to the audience standing and applauding, Ooh. a standing ovation for that great joke. And then a, a cut to Monet looking really <laughs> sad in the corner. Um, <laughs> so we um, we get to the bottom two. The bottom two are Tia Coffee, your yes. favorite, and Joe Black. <laughs> um, and as soon Aww. as the lip sync starts, I have a sneaking suspicion that Tia Coffee is going to send Joe Black home. And I think Tia won that lip sync. What do you think? Ah, uh, it's tough because I watched it and I went, literally, my whole reaction was like, nope. There's no way that she can last and, and sneak her way into another episode. There's no way. I literally was like, nope, no way. Joe's got this. Not snake. Got this. I re that was my, like, got this. Not snake. And, and the snaky snake, I was like, there's no <laughs> way that this will happen. There's no way they could let this happen. <laughs> Literally, I was so confident. I was doing a dance like, got it, got it, got it. And then Joe Black started like looking at her. Also, I thought she was going to do a Ginny Lemon and like walk off too. Why did she spend four hours tea and coffee in the back? Remember that? Like she walked to the back and I was like, where did she go? Because she wanted to run to the front and do like yeah, a big. Yeah, we saw it. Because she wanted again, to do that little another, front roll like, and her cheap, ice cream cone. Another cheap drag trick that like wasn't funny i was just like oh god just take it and then she tried to get up with her ice cream cone dress and like her boy underwear no padding i was like this isn't what are you it was the best lip sync i have ever seen on all of the history of rupaul's drag race in any country it was the epitome of what i want to watch on television so we are, RuPaul has done her age-old trick where she brings a girl back and then immediately sends her home. Immediately. And and who's snake by again? Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> who 
Who? I do think that it, it was time for Joe to go home. I'm not saying Joe Black is not a great drag performer, but I do think that Joe Black might not be great at drag race. No. And I think she may have been a little bit uh, out of her comfort zone and very, with drag race very stuff. set in Joe Black ways. This has been as wild, wilder than I thought it would be. It's, I, I guess it's been a while since we've worked together. I forget you are really nutty. <laughs> I am nutty. I just can't. But also, you bring out my nuttiness, and I love you just the same. Thank you for asking me to be here. I love you. My pleasure. And thank you all for watching at home. Join us next week, and we'll be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2, Episode 6. <laughs>